Okay, I think we're ready to get started. We have a big crowd this morning. And again, uh, just a very warm welcome to our admissions open house. And we hope uh, you enjoy the program this morning. I'm going to introduce our lower school director, Emily Brown. She's going to um, start this morning with her presentation. All right, good morning. I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen with you. Perfect. Um, well, welcome on behalf of all of us at Chandler School. Um, I'm so excited to um, welcome you and I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us this morning to get to know a little bit more about our school. As Gretchen said, my name is Emily Brown and I'm the director of the lower school. This is my third year at Chandler School, though it is my 15th year, hard to believe for me, <laughs> in education. I started my career working in the primary grades, including teaching kindergarten and first grade. Um, spent some time as a literacy specialist, an instructional coach, a dean of students before moving into administration in this role. I am also the mother of a very spunky four and a half year old daughter. And so I am walking in your shoes these days, um, navigating parenting in the pandemic with pre-kindergarten education. So I'd also just like to take this opportunity to say kudos to you for making it through what I'm sure was another long week. And, and thanks for taking time on your weekend this Saturday morning to be with us. Um, I'm so eager to get to know you and your children through this admissions process this year and to really share with you. It's such a privilege for me to share with you about um, my school home and our programming for kindergarten through fifth grade. So um, during my brief time with you today, I wanna to share with you about some elements of our school program, certainly what our community looks like in action when we can be on campus together. Um, I'd like to walk you through what's a typical day at school. I also wanna share with you a little bit about how we have responded to the current circumstances um, and, and the distance learning program that we do have in place currently. Though I'll spend the bulk of my time talking about the good old days, what Chandler is like when we can be together in this space. Um, following my presentation, as Gretchen mentioned, you'll hear from some of our wonderful teachers, our specialists, and some parents who can share with you about their experiences having their children enrolled at the lower school. So I hope that today is informative above all else that we can really answer your questions. But equally, I hope that really even through the screen, you're able to um, get the sense of human connection and joy that really emanates from Chandler School um, and that defines the lower school experience here. So before I jump into the sequence of the school day, I do wanna pause though to speak about our mission. And I am going to read it to you really because it serves as an affirmation and a guide for all of the work that we do. So Chandler's mission is to provide each student with the highest quality and most academically challenging education in a nurturing, balanced and diverse environment. We strive to have our students gain a love of learning, a means of thinking independently and an ability to work collaboratively. A Chandler education seeks to develop good character, self-reliance and a commitment to community and students as a foundation for academic and personal success. And again, I pause to read that because I think that you'll see how that's woven into each element of our program. And, and I really want you to have that sort of mission in mind as I tell you about a day in the life at the lower school. So when our gates open at 8 a.m., we greet our students, Mr. Finch, our head of school and I, um, with a handshake from pre-COVID times, eye contact, and we, and we greet them by name. And this morning routine is just really one of the many ways that we want to make sure that students feel seen, valued, and known on our campus. That's incredibly important to us because the children are the heart of the work that we do. Um, the school day, as I said, begins at 8 o'clock a.m., 8 o'clock a.m., with the exception of Wednesdays, where we have an 8.30 a.m. start. Um, and that's intentional to provide space for teachers to meet and engage in professional development. Um, our campus is open, however, in the morning, beginning at 7.15 a.m., so students are welcome to join us, and that's at no additional charge that there's care provided to them. And we have many students that are here early, um, which we encourage because they're eager to get the school day started. From there, our students um, move when the bell rings into their spacious child-centered classrooms. Um, as you can see from some of these photos, we have items like whiteboard tables and flexible seating that really allows our teachers to respond to each individual student's needs throughout the day. Um, our teachers have a teaching, assistant with, a teaching assistant with them during the day, which allows them to really think creatively and collaboratively about how they approach delivering instruction and assessing student learning along the way. Um, each classroom schedule also begins with a morning meeting. This is such an important ritual where the, the teachers and classmates are able to greet each other, engage in some type of a game, um, sharing perhaps of important special news, really just a touchstone for the social emotional learning that we consider so important and a chance to practice our six pillars of character, trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship during the day. 
On Fridays, our entire K-8 student body does gather in the gym for our all school assembly. Um, this is such a special time because, well, for, for two reasons really, but first that the students really plan, lead and participate in the assembly. So it's an opportunity for them to practice public speaking um, and to be really doing that in a safe, inclusive environment as they take new risks. It's also where our beloved buddy program, which you may have heard about is on display. Um, our kindergarten students are paired with a sixth grade student, first graders with a seventh grade student, and second graders with the eighth grade student. They follow throughout their time. So, so really they'd be with the same middle schooler throughout. Our middle school students meet the younger students um, in their classrooms or at the gate, walk them across the field and then sit with them to cheer them on, encourage them during their presentations and really model for them the types of behaviors um, and attitudes that we um, hope that they'll be able to achieve as they move through their journey at the lower school. As morning routines wrap up and children head back to their classrooms or begin to engage in subject area work, our teachers are really focused on differentiated instruction, meaning that they want to meet the needs of each individual child um, throughout the day and make sure that they're getting the, the challenge that they need to succeed at the goals that they've set for themselves. Um, so as I read to you in our mission, it, it is our, our, our mission to move towards the most academically challenging education, but also balanced with that piece about a balanced, diverse, nurturing environment. Um, it's important to us that both, both of those things have to be at play as we're working with students. Um, and we really make this a priority because we wanna be supportive of our students' abilities, but also their ambitions. We know if we're able to push them, they can engage in problem solving, they can persevere, to have those skills that are so important to success um, in their time at Chandler and beyond. And we also wanna give them time to critically think about their own purpose and impact in the world. So they have opportunities to do that throughout the day. We do have a strong or curriculum that focuses on building critical foundational skills, because certainly that is the work of the lower school as well. Um, and as students move from one grade to the next, we wanna ensure that they have the skills they need to be successful to take on new challenges. Our teachers regularly engage in professional development and are incredibly committed to their work. Um, whether they're helping students find agency as authors or moving them through evolution of mathematical thinking from something um, pictorial to abstract or concrete, our teachers really demonstrate a love, care, and commitment to their craft. Um, that's really unlike anything I've seen at any other school I've worked at. Um, through interdiscipl interdisciplinary projects, STEAM, maker activities throughout the day, students use their head, their hands, and their heart to really engage in learning, um, to fully access new concepts, and to tackle challenges that are relevant in our world today. As you can see in some of the pictures here, there are students building um, spacecrafts, there are students working in our garden. Um, we have uh, our wax museum, our fourth graders who are um, trying on different identities of historical figures. I think that's Lucille Ball and Barack Obama down there. Um, and students who are working to create stop motion animation um, even in, in their kindergarten classes. So Chandler students design, plant, um, you know, build butterfly gardens. As I said, they do stop motion animation, play with bee bots to do um, simple coding with robots. Um, and again, they, they're comfortable taking risks because they're in a supportive environment that allows them to assert increasing in independence over time. But perhaps most importantly, my favorite part of being able to work in the lower school is that um, we also celebrate childhood as a journey, not a race. We truly believe that play is the work of children. And so we give them ample time to promote that play. Students in whether they're in kindergarten or fifth grade have at least two scheduled recess breaks um, during the day um, and lots of spaces to play outside. You can see our orb is on display here. That's what the, the large figure with all of the ropes where um, Chloe is hanging. Um, you know, we have lots of um, manipulatives and toys within the classroom for them to access. And there are some kiddos on the kindergarten playground. In addition, our students do have daily physical education classes, and you'll hear from um, some of our PE teachers in a little bit. Um, but that dedicated faculty leads them through a variety of athletic endeavors, whether it's on the field, the sport court, or in the gym, or accessing, you can see our bike rodeo here, um, our, our, the nearby Rose Bowl. Um, we provide each child with their own piece of equipment, which really allows them to practice and participate fully to develop the skills they need to participate. Um, in athletic endeavors, perhaps you know, they, want, they want to pursue team sports in the middle school or beyond, so they're prepared for that. Um, and we expose them to a lot of things, not just traditional athletics, but um, as you can see here, biking, badminton, skateboarding. Um, that's actually our art teacher, Travis, leading that. You'll hear from him today too. 
um, a circus unit, unicycling. So lots of, lots of fun things. It's never a dull moment at the lower school in PE. Our students do visit a variety of learning environments. And as a result, they really benefit from strong relationships for, with all of our specialist teachers as well. Um, we have a fully equipped science lab for our lower school students um, where they can participate in hands-on experimentation. We also have a garden space that they can um, sort of think about science out in the real world as well and explore and observe. And then in our lower school art room, we have um, two full-time art teachers who you'll get to hear from today. Well, well Travis is here to represent the art department. Um, they have such a commitment to student voice and choice in their curriculum. And under their care, our students learn about artistic behaviors rather than just um, sort of how to mimic what, what another artist might be doing, but how to experiment with all of the tools that they have on hand, um, whether it's drawing, painting, or sculpture. Um, we also have two full-time music teachers. You'll hear from James in a bit um, about music as well, but they teach students through voice instruction, instrumental experimentation, um, and always connecting back to what students are working on in the classroom, what's relevant to their core curriculum, and engaging students in group performances and productions. Um, Spanish language instruction begins in kindergarten at the lower school and continues through middle school all the way through eighth grade with an expectation of conversational fluency upon graduation. Um, our students also benefit from a number of dedicated lower school um, teachers, a dedicated library space that they can go to, um, literacy and math curriculum directors, an educational therapist, a social emotional wellness coordinator, and a director of innovation. Um, a lower school education also extends um, beyond the boundaries of the Chandler School campus. Um, our fifth grade students travel each year to Catalina Island for a trip. And if you're watching the slides closely, that is me in a wetsuit. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go snorkeling with last year's fifth grade class. Um, our fourth graders visit the Capitol each spring for the day. And we have a number of opportunities to engage in a variety of field trips because of our partnership with uh, institutions like the Hunt Huntington. And we're also fortunate to host visiting authors, artists, and alumni who come back to speak with our students each year. Um, and coming up, we have an author, Lisa Klein Ransom, will be visiting with our fourth grade and fifth grade students um, just in next week to talk about her award winning novel, um, Finding Langston. So lots of opportunities to, to move beyond and to welcome others in to teach us about, about what our students could become. The traditional school day does wrap up at 3 p.m. However, on any given afternoon, up to 200 or more students are um, participating in our robust after school offerings. Um, it's wildly popular because we um, do staff in-house. Students are able to stay with us um, and they get to stay with their friends. It really does feel like an extension of their school day um, and exploration of lots of different activities. Offerings include, but are not limited to chess, um, music, cooking classes, fashion design, mentoring, a, a homework club, um, and just good old you know, fun play out on the field as well. Um, again, it has an in-house staff and we have offerings that extend up to 6 p.m. each evening um, when we're able to be together on campus. Um, of course, I would wanna mention that a strong um, school home connection is a cornerstone of the Chandler experience. We value parent participation. We feel incredibly privileged to be alongside you on the journey of um, guiding your child through these, through these um, foundational years. So we have lots of events where parents are um, participating, um, rely on many parent volunteers to help us with things and we just feel grateful. You'll hear from the parent panel as well so they can tell you a little bit about that experience. And I wanted to pause here uh, just to show again back before um, COVID began, but a time where we were all gathered as a school family. Um, it really is the strong foundation of our program that allowed us to respond to the many challenges that 2020 has presented to all of us. Um, we've created a distance learning schedule that we are using now that really mirrors our daily in-person experience and allows our kids as best as possible to engage in the full scope of our programming. Students access class with their teachers and their classmates via Zoom, and their daily schedules really support the predictability and consistency that young children need to feel safe, seen, soothed, and secure in a digital space. Um, our teachers are using the Google Suite for Education um, to communicate with their students and parents, and our third through fifth grade students have been equipped with laptops for at-home use um, to really engage in this ever-changing technological environment. And of course, we've also documented um, a school reopening plan that the Board of Trustees and a medical advisory board made up of our current parents has, has really helped us to create. And we are ready to use that reopening plan when we are able to welcome everybody back to campus, campus to really rely on those four pillars of safety that have guided us 
around physical distancing, masking, screening, and hygiene measures. So we will be excited when that scenario is available to us again. Um, and 2020 has brought some bright spots, so that's worth mentioning as well. So before I wrap up, I'd just like to share with you about an exciting project that um, is carrying Chandler into the future. This is a photo here of our newly completed innovation lab, the Center for Innovation at Chandler School. This building features an additional um, art studio, a maker space, as well as a flexible classroom space. And we're excited when students are back to campus to see how this space really evolves. Um, it's just uh, one of the many features that will be available to them to access, but also a great symbol of um, the community spirit and the, the parent and community partnership that has allowed us to continue to evolve as a program. So I, as I said, I am I'm going to turn it over to some others to speak because I want you to meet so many of the other special people in our community. So I'm excited to introduce our two incredible kindergarten teachers. Kindergarten teachers are some of the most hardworking, amazing people um, that I know. So. I am going to introduce Carrie Barbado and Jennifer Pappas to share a little bit with you more about um, the incredible work that they do with our students each day. Thank you, Emily. Hi, I'm Jennifer Pappas. This is my 13th year teaching kindergarten at Chandler and my 20th year as a teacher. And I have three high school children who all went through Chandler um, and, and love their experience. I am Carrie Barbado, and uh, this is my 11th year at Chandler School. It at once feels like it's been a blip of time, and I also feel like I've been there forever, and it is a place that I love. Um, I have one son who's a senior, and um, I am happy to have learn so much about child development through him and through his needs and be able to um, use that with the children in class kind of every day uh, at, at Chandler. So thank you for being here. <laughs> okay, so at Chandler, <clears throat> we know that as important as it is to teach the academic subjects, first and foremost comes a focus on teaching children. We teach kindergarten from the perspective of its original meaning as the experience of a child's garden our philosophy stems from children being nurtured in a positive environment and encouraged by us, the attentive gardeners. Children develop a strong sense of themselves as dedicated learners and community members when they're provided a nurturing education during their formative years. We know that children acquire cognitive and social skills by using their natural curiosity and desire to learn. So we encourage them through the use of crafts, manipulatives and hands-on work to spark their love of learning. Through the use of music, nature, stories, and dramatic play, children are best able to reach their potential. One of the things we love about kindergarten at Chandler is that the children have many opportunities to play outside. In addition to having PE every single day, where they engage in organized play and learn physical skills, they also have two additional recesses throughout the day. We learn so much about them as people by observing them during their free play. Play is important for healthy brain development as it allows them to use their creativity while developing their imagination, their dexterity, cognitive and physical abilities. And we often find them synthesizing lessons learned in the classroom by acting them out on the playground. Another way that we truly learn about our students is through the responsive classroom. Responsive classroom is a student-centered social and emotional learning approach to teaching and discipline. Social emotional learning helps students and adults understand and manage their emotions and emotional skills. We begin every day with a morning meeting. It's a gathering time to listen and speak with respect and to learn that all of our voices matter. Each morning also includes a greeting, a group activity, and individual sharing. And it's during this time that we also teach about Chandler's six pillars of character. All of these components help build our students' interpersonal skills and nurture a sense of belonging in our class families. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, I'm just gonna talk a little bit, but I do wanna say that Emily Brown gave such a beautiful introduction and such a comprehensive um, little talk about what Chandler is all about. So we're just trying to fill in a little bit more about kindergarten and, um, you know, of course the children are going to get their rigorous academics. Um, 
after all, they're at Chandler and it's one of the things we're known for. And so in the lower grades, we really try and work on their interpersonal skills with them. And so um, just dovetailing on what Jennifer was just saying, we do really dedicate our morning routines to responsive classroom foundations. And um, we just love the community that grows within our classrooms and within the relationships between the children too. So even during our most academic subjects, let's say math, the children are still working on their interpersonal skills and Jennifer and I and our assistants always have a keen eye on them and are watching them grow and helping them grow as people. So even during a math lesson, you know, some children are maybe working on numbers to 10, some children are working in another small group in on numbers to 20, but all of them are working on their communication skills, their um, cooperation skills, learning to share, learning to regulate their emotions, um, especially like if they're losing their math game. So we really try and reach each child academically and on a um, personal level, just where they are and having them work in small groups in you know, math and in language arts is one of the ways that we truly accomplish that. And we also just have our eye on them, you know, when they're out at snack and when they're out at lunch and we're socializing with them all the time. We join them on the playground. Um, and all of these are opportunities for us to just, you know, guide the children in their social emotional growth. Um, Emily mentioned the Innovation Lab, which is an exciting uh, new development at Chandler. And the children in kindergarten have always been excited by the work that we've done, um, which is, before it was always done in the classroom, but they learn beginning coding skills through um, using their B-Bots and they learn beginning engineering skills uh, through working with maker projects. But all of these things are, again, part of their education. Um, and you know the other things that they take away from Chandler are also a big part of their education. So we feel strongly that all of these offerings are very significant and um, will grow the children in wonderful ways. But we would be remiss if we didn't mention the things that we really know the children love about coming to Chandler School. So as was mentioned before, they love their buddies and they have have their buddies um, starting in kindergarten and they have them for the three years, kindergarten, first and second grade. The same buddy for those three years. Um, we see them every Friday. They bring them to uh, the all school assembly and really wonderful, beautiful relationships um, form with those with the older kids and they feel they just feel special having a buddy, you know, these they wrap their arms around them every Friday and um, it's a really beautiful part of, of Chandler. Um, they love their, the kids love their individual sharing days where they just get to kind of show off a little bit, practice their public speaking and be seen by all of their classmates. They love uh, just snack time and lunch time where they can just sit outside near the garden and frankly, just be themselves without having to be schooled or you know any demands put on them. Um, they love, love, love their recess times as well. Just getting to play out their imaginations and to be with their friends. Um, of course, they love their gardening class, which is also taught by our wonderful Spanish teacher, uh, Katie Villanueva, where they just get to dig in the dirt and get messy and grow vegetables and make salads and learn how to make salad dressing and watch our pumpkins decompose and pick snap peas and they just come alive. Um, they also love getting hot lunch on Friday because they get to walk around campus and see all the big kids, quote unquote. And uh, they love lining up in anticipation of actually leaving the classroom. So they do this often throughout their week because they get to go to music class or library class or PE every day or art class. And uh, they just love a stroll around campus en route to someplace else and where they get to get out, see you know whoever's out and about, give a wave, push their faces up against Mr. Finch's office doors, um, get a quick hug from a sibling. And so we let them do these things because again, all of these things are part of their education. So from the look on their faces and the spring in their steps when they are en route to someplace else, um, we know that their destination is really not as important as their journey. And they love to get out, they love to explore, and they love all the opportunities that are afforded to them at Chandler. But 
they also love coming back to the safety and security of their nest or our classroom, where they know that they are safe and secure and seen. Thank you. Thank you so much to our uh, dedicated kindergarten teachers. And um, we're gonna move into our next um, segment um, with our lower school specialists. So um, as you heard in our previous presentations, um, each week lower school students attend classes in art, music, science, library, PE. And these classes are taught by just the most wonderful experts in their field. And they give children time um, for them to discover more about who they are as learners and artists and athletes. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to our specialist and we will start with Connie Mohandesi. Hi everyone, um, I'm Connie Mohandesi. Um, I have two children, a junior who also graduated Chandler and a current sixth grader. Um, this year, because of COVID, I'm a kindergarten teacher as well, but I am also the lower school language arts curriculum director, which is just a super wordy title that means I have the privilege of going into every kindergarten through fifth grade classroom to support the teachers and students in reading and writing. There really is no typical day for me, but some of the things that you might find me doing is reviewing curriculum to ensure that there's diversity that reflects the students to increase their sense of belonging and inclusion, uh, planning professional development for teachers, co-teaching a lesson with the teacher, working with a group of kindergartners on phonics, and then maybe a group of fifth graders supporting writing, providing challenging reading discussions with third graders. Um, so I feel really lucky that I get to go into all of these classrooms and meet children where they are and get to watch them grow through their elementary years. I also have a math counterpart, Kara Gansato, who provides similar support to teachers and students in math instruction. And we both consider ourselves very lucky to be able to work with and get to know all the lower school students. Good morning, my name is uh, Adriana Jimenez. I uh, am only one member of the PE department. This is my fourth year at Chandler. Uh, Mr. Anderson, he is uh, the head of the department, um, is not here with us today, but he is, this is his 25th year at Chandler. Um, and Mr. Hartley, who has been here for, this is his second year. Um, as mentioned earlier, students do have PE every day. They get to um, see all of the teachers, all, all of us by the end of the year. Um, so they'll have the opportunity to have myself, Mr. Hartley and Mr. Anderson. Um, typically we have one week units. Every student has their own piece of equipment and this is just to ensure that they that we maximize their practice time uh, to master a skill. Uh, typically those skills lead up to a one versus one game. So then they have the opportunity to practice that skill in a game setting. Um, every student typically, um, I mean the units that, that they get to uh, be a part of are, we do jump rope, kicking, dribbling, uh, pillow polo, badminton, paddle skills, catching, throwing, and gymnastics. Um, as mentioned earlier, they also have the opportunity to have units like unicycle, um, circus, where we practice juggling, we practice stilt, walking on stilts, um, skateboarding, rollerblading, um, so on and so forth. In uh, grades three to fifth, students have two week units. Um, and again, students have their own piece of equipment. Um, the, once the skill is mastered, we uh, lead on with small sided games. So you have games of, you know, four versus four. And again, if you're practicing, um, you're practicing strategies and tactics of the game. Um, and students are fortunate to have Mr. Hartley, myself and Mr. Anderson uh, before the school year is over. And some of those units include again, softball, skateboarding, like I mentioned, unicycle, circus, uh, roller skating, hockey, dance, gymnastics, and lacrosse.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Mr. Connor, and I'm one of the music teachers here at Chandler School. Um, I work alongside Ms. Williams Moore, and we work as a team in educating all the students at some point throughout the school year. Music has historically been a thriving department within the Chandler community, and we believe that music is more than just a class, it's an experience and part of the development of the whole child. Music oftentimes has a very simple and heartfelt message, but undoubtedly is very complex in theory and science. So for our younger students, we aim to connect them to the sounds, the patterns, the movement, and emotions of music. We oftentimes use storytelling as an avenue to inspire the students as well as introduce them to the various masters of the craft. Michael Jackson, <laughs> the Beatles, and so on. We celebrate music of different cultures and encourage the students to appreciate the similarities and the differences. While we are still teaching remotely, we will continue to use Seesaw, Google Classroom, Google Slides, Soundtrap, GarageBand, and even iMovie as tools to experience and create music. Each year at um, Chandler Lower School has a culminating performing arts showcase that normally happens on campus, but once we began learning remotely, we were able to create a digital performance that was shared with the community online. We miss being on campus and learning face to face, but Chandler continues to offer a stellar remote learning program and I'm so proud to be a part of this community. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hola, I am Katie Villanueva and I've been teaching Spanish at, um, at Chandler for over 15 years. I have a 15-month-old uh, baby, and I have a sixth grader at Chandler and a third grader. Uh, we feel so lucky um, just listening to all these teachers talk um, that my kids get to experience this every day, both in regular learning and remote learning. They've been doing great, so we're really fortunate. So uh, why learn a second language? Well, being bilingual has many cognitive, social, academic, and economic benefits. I truly believe that learning a second language connects us to others in a very special and meaningful way. The learner gains an appreciation of diverse perspectives, cultures, and people. There are also cognitive benefits such as increasing critical thinking skills, creativity, and flexibility of mind. So why learn Spanish? Spanish is spoken in more than 20 countries around the world. Um, it's also a really important part of our culture here in the greater Los Angeles um, area. So learning Spanish helps our students to connect to their own communities and beyond. Uh, in this photo, we're planting some marigolds as part of Spanish and gardening lesson for El Día de los Muertos. Uh, so what does a typical Spanish class look like? In lower school, um, K through five, the students have Spanish for about 30 minutes twice a week. The lessons are super engaging and fun and are aimed at providing meaningful communication experiences through constant active participation. We practice speaking, listening, reading, writing through a variety of, of activities that include games, singing, reciting poetry, listening to stories, <clears throat> acting. Um, I use many visual clues so that I'm able to deliver most of the lesson in the target language. Every student is required participate regularly by speaking and being active during class. With much repetition, review, and practice, students are able to retain much of what they learn. Um, my students also participate in cultural activities like the one pictured here. This is our annual tamalada. Um, we do this every December, um, and we make every child in lower school makes um, tamales, and we sell them uh, for an orphanage in Mexico. We raise money for an orphanage in Mexico. Uh, in remote learning, I have continued to deliver engaging an engaging online program with the same passion uh, that I bring to the classroom and energy. Um, when I need more ideas, I reach out to my students and my fellow teachers and my own children, and I find creative ways to keep these kids learning. All right, that's it's my time. Hello, everybody. My name is Travis Chatham. Uh, I am one of two art teachers here at Chandler School. Uh, this is my 16th year teaching art at this amazing place. Um, I am a graduate of Art Center College of Design here in Pasadena. Um, 
I have two boys, one who is still in Chandler, Liam, he's in seventh grade, and Lucas graduated last year, and he is in his first year at Loxa High School for the Arts. Uh, they honestly loved their years at Chandler. They had such an amazing experience. I mentioned that I am one of two art teachers here at the school. Julie Zemel is my awesome teaching partner, and I like to brag that we have the best job at Chandler. We, like some of the other specialists, get to teach each student throughout all of their years, starting in kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. It is so much fun to be a part of their Chandler journey. Ms. Zemel and I, we take pride in our art program. It is a student-driven curriculum that is truly driven by the students and their passion for making art their way. While here at Chandler, the children learn of their artistic behaviors and they use those behaviors to create the amazing art their way. On campus, we have two art facilities that the students will have art in. It is where the magic happens. Both art rooms are state-of-the-art facilities and they have all the materials that these little angels will need. Anything from markers, crayons, paint, clay, uh, and printing presses are available to them. Students will have art once a week for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. As they get into middle school, they will have art twice a week and even three times a week. Outside of their weekly art classes, uh, the students can come into the art room for art club three times a week if they'd like, and it's during their lunch recess. And at that time, the art room is theirs. They come in with their friends and they can collaborate and make art together. And they really truly have a blast. I tell you, I, I, I love teaching art. I love teaching at Chandler and I honestly have a blast with these kids. Uh, thank you so much for your time this morning and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks. Thank you so much to all of our fabulous teachers and specialists who have uh, shared their programs this morning. Um, our community would not be complete if we did not mention the valuable contributions by our volunteer uh, parents and their families. And today we have three very dedicated parent volunteers and contributors to join our conversation. So I'd like to introduce Jenny Caw, Dan Harper, and Christine Ahrens, who will each uh, share a little bit about their family's experience here at Chandler School. So Jenny. Good morning, thanks Gretchen. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny Ka. Uh, I have two boys at Chandler. My eldest is in fourth grade and my youngest is in first grade. Um, I enjoy being involved at Chandler because it's just such an amazing community, not only for the kids, but for the parents as well. Uh, I actually moved to California from New York uh, many years ago and I didn't know that many people in California, but through being involved at school and frankly, just meeting uh, fellow parents in my kids' classes, I found a really great community and I've made some really wonderful lifelong friends here. Um, there are a lot of different ways to be involved at uh, Chandler. I've enjoyed being a class rep, um, a mentor family, and I'm currently the script uh, gift card coordinator for the CFA, which is Chandler's volunteer organization. Um, my husband and I initially chose Chandler because of its well-rounded, high-quality academic education. Um, friends of ours who had sent their kids to Chandler also told us about their amazing experience and how Chandler delivered this education in such a nurturing environment. Um, that was so important to us. And then after meeting a few young Chandler students and hearing them speak so eloquently and confidently, that was what sealed the deal for us in choosing Chandler for our family. Thank you for uh, sharing your experience, Jenny. Uh, I'd like to ask Dan to join us now. Hi, yes, uh, my name is Dan Harper. Uh, I have a fourth grader, Henry, and a first grader named James. Uh, I have been uh, privileged to volunteer in several different aspects since we uh, joined the Chandler community five years ago. I served as a first grade room representative. Uh, my wife, Melissa, and I served as the uh, annual fund parent coordinators. Last year, I served as the uh, CFA hot lunch coordinator, providing uh, hot lunches on Fridays for the students at school. And uh, this year is kind of, uh, it's kind of been an ad hoc experience, but we just finished putting on a Lego contest for the kids. That was a lot of fun. Um, we initially chose Chandler School uh, 
partly because my wife, Melissa, is an alum of Chandler. And so it was on our radar when we started our school selection process when Henry was entering kindergarten. Uh, but I was a complete stranger to it. I had no idea uh, anything about this school community. Uh, and I went into it uh, really kind of with my eyes wide open. And we went through the admissions process with several different schools. And by the end of that process, it became clear to me that Chandler was uh, the choice. And I was really happy to find out that my wife uh, agreed with that. So uh, we've been uh, we've been thrilled with Chandler and we're happy to be involved. And uh, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Dan. We're so happy to have your family with us as well. And now I'd love to invite uh, Christy to join us. Hi, I'm Christy Nairns. I have two little boys. One is in second grade and the other one is in kindergarten. Um, I am currently a class rep for the kindergarten class. And last year I, I was on the fall festival committee. <coughs> so it was a lot of fun being involved in different aspects of this school. Um, we initially you know, looked into Chandler because of its strong academic reputation. We live in an area that has great public schools. Um, so my husband was kind of like, okay, I'll go check it out. But you know, we really, he really wanted to send our kids to school closer to where we live. Um, but we did a tour of the school and we both just fell in love. Um, we did the open house, went through the academic process, um, did a tour of the school, and we both were just blown away uh, by the teachers that we met, the staff, other families that, you know, went to school there. Um, just, you know, we felt like it was just such a positive, uh, nurturing environment, um, great community. And um, we were right, you know, it's, it's just wonderful. We've been so happy to be a part of this great community. Thank you all three for, for sharing that experience with your family. I have a quick question for um, each of you. Christy, I'll start with you. And wondering if you can uh, reflect um, based on your experience um, with your family here at Chandler and talk a little bit about how you um, would describe the balance that, that we speak so much of in our, in our mission statement and how do you find that we execute that here at Chandler? You know, there is a great balance in the program. You know, obviously it's a great, it's a really strong academic program, um, which is very important to us, but we also, you know, want to make sure our child is happy and well taken care of. And there is a great emphasis on nurturing the social development of the students at the school as well. Um, some of the great examples have been shown in the most challenging of times these past few months. Um, all of us are going through such, um, you know, it's challenging times. It's a very unprecedented time for everybody. But I hear my children, you know, on Zoom in the morning and the teachers for the morning meeting, they're checking in on this on the kids. How are you doing? How are you feeling? For the younger ones, there's like pictures, like let us know how, how you're feeling. And they're just, you know, they're teaching them and they're doing a great job teaching them, but they're also making sure that the kids are, are okay and that they're happy and that they're getting the social nurturing that they need. Um, also, you know, the teachers are checking in on the parents. I mean, the teachers are going through so much and with their own family and teaching our kids, but they're making sure like they're emailing the, the parents to make sure that we're okay. Um, and like one of the curriculums my kids, one of my, my older son is doing right now is I am curriculum talking about his background, what, what the strengths that he has, um, just really showcasing how important and how individual and great the kids are. Um, another thing that I find really great this year as well is the teachers, um, all out for lunch, the teachers are doing lunch with the kids. Mrs. Brown is doing lunch with the kids. Um, they're getting a social aspect, having lunch together, but also having the teachers and Mrs. Brown there. Um, and then from a parent's perspective, you know, even throughout the year, not in COVID, um, there's parent um, wellness sessions we could do. I think a couple of weeks ago, there was a social and emotional wellness session um, so Chandler really does place a great emphasis on academics, but also making sure, you know, the social emotional wellness of the child is um, taken care of. So it's a, it's a great balance in the program and one of the many reasons we love the school. Thank you for sharing that with us, Christy. Um, my next question is uh, for Jenny. Um, Jenny, I'm wondering if you can speak to um, Chandler's differentiated learning program. We learned a little bit about it. Um, during the presentation from the teachers, how they address uh, providing the most academically challenging education for each child. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about your experience uh, at Chandler as a parent and how that works. Uh, yes, I'd be happy to. 
uh, I really appreciate how Chandler recognizes the strengths and the opportunities in each child, uh, even starting from kindergarten and every year after the teachers build a curriculum that meets your child where they are. Uh, all the kids start from different points because they come from different preschools um, and the kindergarten teachers are sensitive to that and they'll nurture each child to succeed at their own pace. And, and, and I definitely saw that in my two kids. Um, I think that the Chandler teachers have always been really great at supporting each child's needs. Um, they know that there's not one way to teach and there isn't one way to learn. Uh, just in the last few weeks, I heard my son, my son's first grade teacher uh, guide them through a journal writing assignment. And typically you would think that you write the journal entry first and then you draw the picture after. But I actually heard her say, tell them that if you felt stuck that you can draw your picture first um, of what you wanna write about and then go ahead and write. And that was particularly helpful to my son because um, it, it really helped him to visualize what he wanted to write about. Um, and then so he could see what he wanted to write about and then he got to writing and he didn't feel stuck staring at a blank piece of paper um, and i just i love that that was an option for him uh, in writing class and i know that if my children need any support that the the teachers and the administration are just they're always there and they're so accessible and um i think every student at chandler has a special reason why they love Chandler. So whether your child is particularly interested in math, that they excel in art or science, PE, Spanish, any subject matter, Chandler's overall offering is so strong and it meets all of our kids' needs. And I think that's what makes Chandler students thrive and love learning, which is what's so important to us. Awesome, thank you so much, Jenny. And finally, um, Dan, you uh, shared some of your own experiences as a parent volunteer um, as serving hot lunch. I'm wondering if you could um, speak a little bit more about um, the strong life, uh, lifelong relationships that you and your wife are building in the community as parent volunteers and what other opportunities there are for parent involvement through the CFA. Absolutely. Um, one of my favorite things about Chandler is how welcoming the parent community is and how enthusiastic the parent community is about volunteerism and about participating in uh, school life, um, not with their kids, but to help out the school uh, overall and in general financially, but also through uh, sweat equity and just getting out there and, and pitching in. Um, it's really the best way to meet other parents, to get to know the school and the community. Um, when we first started at Chandler, uh, we were made aware of a plethora of opportunities to volunteer, everything from taking the kids on field trips, which we'll be getting back to soon enough, uh, to coming on campus to help make pumpkin bread, read to the kids in the library, uh, things that are pretty low bar to entry. But then there are also deeper ways to get involved in a more long-term way, getting involved with CFA, which is the Chandler Family Associates. Um, and uh, that's opportunities for deeper engagement, getting involved in things like uh, helping out with the annual fund, putting on the family fair, there's a gala every other year. There's just, there's a, a broad menu of ways that you can get involved in school from a very small little bit, if that's all you have time for, to a deep involvement that really can, uh, you know, uh, undergird the long-term health of the school. Um, but everybody's welcome, uh, I found from the beginning. And uh, I found that the more I got involved, the more I wanted to be involved. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's one of my favorite things about Chandler. Wonderful, thank you so much. Thank you so much to all of our wonderful volunteer parents that have joined us this morning and, and shared their experience. Um, Jenny and Dan and Christy, we really appreciate uh, not only your being here today, but sharing your experiences with our visitors this morning. And um, we really appreciate and value you so much in the community. So thank you for, for joining us. So at this point of the program, um, we I know that there have been some chat uh, questions entered into the chat and continue to do so. I think we have about um, 10 minutes or so and uh, Joan Bravo is gonna uh, field those questions and um, Emily Brown and I are here to help support you answer any additional questions that you may have um, for the next few minutes and then of course I will 
you know, put it out there that always feel free to, to contact me, Gretchen Lurie, Director of Enrollment Management, uh, beyond your visit this morning. Um, I'll also remind you that at 11 a.m. we have our middle school open house and you should have received the link to that. If you'd like to join us for that program as well, we'd be more than happy to have you join us then as, as well. So Joan, uh, do you have some questions for, for me and Emily? Yes, thank you so much. Um, I know just in the interest of time, we're at 9.55. I wanna let everybody know that the, this is being recorded. So if you're not able to stay for the rest of the questions and answers, please, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and download the recording and put it onto our website. So it'll be available for everyone to view um, at a convenient time for you. But I will go ahead and start the questions, and qu questions now. Um, Emily, uh, do we have any other second language options other than um, Spanish? So Spanish is the chosen language for us to introduce students to. And again, I said that uh, conversational fluency is the expectation um, by the end of eighth grade. We feel like that foundation provides students the opportunity then when they go to high school to access a second or third language because they'll already have um, Spanish under their belt. Um, and as Katie described, we really feel like that is the language that is most helpful in getting them to connect um, with the local community. So certainly we encourage um, exploration and there are some opportunities in our after school program for students to engage perhaps in Mandarin or some other offerings. But within our academic day, Spanish is the focus of our um, language program. Great. There are a couple questions here about homework and what uh, the homework load looks like for the lower school students and um, how they're differentiated if a student feels that, you know, they need some enrichment because it's a little too easy or they need, um, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, and, and, it's, and if they need some support because it's a little too challenging. So could you talk a little bit about the homework program? Sure. So our initial thinking about homework um, when we're getting to know students is that we, we typically say about 10 minutes per grade level is what we're assigning at night. Um, in addition to really encouraging students to engage in independent um, reading practices at home. Um, with that being said, what we encourage um, most of all is communication between families um, and teacher and student as they have um, increasing independency and agency to do so to let their teachers know um, about what's working for the family. We also value so much the time that um, families have outside of school and we know it's limited for the playtime, the downtime, the family time, dinner conversations, things that they need. So we wanna be responsive to what's working, what's not. So again, 10 minutes about per grade level is the goal, um, but lots of conversations are encouraged so that we can find the sweet spot that works for students. Um, and of course, we, we don't rely on homework to just be um, worksheets or assignments in sort of that, that basic format. And we find that that helps us to be able to extend the work and offer that enrichment because it's really more about experience for kids. And um, we can do that by guiding around what their passions are. And then certainly if students need additional help, we have um, many of the people that you uh, met today who are available to provide that. And within our after school programming, um, um, some homework support that's available there. Gretchen, um, we have some questions about um, the entry point at Chandler. Could you talk a little bit about, um, you know, what grades uh, we have open um, for students enrolling at Chandler? Absolutely. So I will say that we, at every grade level, we always uh, encourage interested families to apply. Our main entry points where we have new students enter on a regular basis every year, our kindergarten, where we have 40 openings, and then in sixth and seventh grade, which are both entry points for our middle school program, which runs sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. But we have, uh, we generally have about 12 to 15 spots in sixth grade and 10 to 12 in seventh. Um, the other grades, uh, first through fifth, we do uh, fill spots based on attrition, and that number varies from year to year. Um, so again, we always encourage interested families to apply. I always tell families, if you're interested and you don't apply, then there's absolutely no chance of, of securing a spot at Chandler. But we, um, we really um, would encourage you to, to submit an application if you are interested at any grade level. Thank you. Um, Gretchen, I'll uh, ask you another question. In terms of the, what is the current demographic makeup of our student body? And I think this is a question about um, diversity at, at the school. Sure. Sure. So um, as we describe in our, in our mission statement, we are a diverse um, student body and, and we embrace that, we celebrate that. Uh, we have uh, students from a wide geographic uh, makeup. Um, I believe about 44 different zip codes make up our student body. 
We are all also, um, a school uh, that represents 67% of our student body is our students of color and our, um, our faculty, uh, full-time faculty make up about 45% student, uh, faculty of color. So we are diverse in lots of ways. Um, our mission aligns with our recognition of racial, religious, cultural, and economic differences. Um, so that is something that we embrace uh, throughout our admissions experience. Thank you. Emily, just to follow up on that, you know, a lot of questions about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and Chandler's commitment to that, and, um, and our commitment to, you know, this social justice, and how we teach that to our students. Can you talk a little bit about Chandler's commitment to DEI, and also give examples, maybe, of um, things that we, you know, work with our students in to, to uh, develop those uh, empathy? Sure, thanks. So yes, diversity, equity, inclusion is really at the, the center of our curriculum. It's, it's our intention to weave it in to not be a um, sort of separate standalone um, topic to address with students. Some of the different things that we've done is certainly engage our teachers in ongoing professional development um, around DEI topics. Um, just this fall, we partnered with the nonprofit group Pollyanna um, to work on adopting um, their racial literacy curriculum, which is designed for students in kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, so there are lessons that teachers are working on with students, again, not as standalone, but can be really embedded uh, to be connected to the literature that we put in front of them, um, to what they're working on in science, social studies, even in math, um, beginning with really um, considering identity, looking for those mirrors and windows, ways that students can see themselves in the curriculum and ways that students can be exposed to other experiences, um, all the way as our students get older, of course, to working through um, a complicated um, history of injustice um, in our nation. So, so those are addressed with our students. Um, other things that we've done recently, um, a complete classroom library audit um, to go through and see what types of representation are not only in um, the authors, illustrators, characters in books, um, and then done a, a whole lot of work to order different titles that we think um, speak to not only representation within our school, but exposure again, those windows for students to, to see um, uh, cultures, ethnicities, races that perhaps are not in their classroom community. Um, so there's a strong commitment. We've also had um, the Western Justice Center come and do professional development with us in recent years. Um, that was a really incredible experience where we had students who um, were actually performing as a classroom. Um, there was a teacher that was, was someone playing the role of teacher, um, watching them to go through different um, interactions allowing us to provide feedback as educators and then watch how that might play out in the classroom so that we could um, go back to our classrooms with a little more um, empathy and thought about how we might address situations that arise. Um, and certainly uh, lots of trainings around implicit bias um, and we will be doing some, some work coming up about election season as well um, to figure out how to best support our community through, through these times. So um, it's an ongoing part of um, the conversation at Chandler School and certainly something to which we have a strong commitment. Thank you so much. Um, and I, you know, I do also want to add that I just because I work with the alumni office at Chandler, just the great work that we've been doing. Um, and uh, Jennifer Johnson, our alumni director, uh, has been having affinity groups that allow, you know, voice uh, voices of our alumni to participate in, um, you know, forums and sessions. Um, so I think the work of DEI is, it, you know, it begins at kindergarten, and we we believe that it continues, you know, through throughout their lives, and and we you know, provide opportunities for our alums also to participate in the work of, of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, some some uh, easier questions, if I, if I may. So uh, the class sizes of our lower school, um, that there's a lot of questions about that. Could you talk about maybe the teacher-student ratio from kindergarten and, and through our lower school? Sure. So we typically have about 20 students per classroom. Um, again, that's with a lead teacher and in kindergarten, a full-time teaching assistant and the grades going forward, a part-time teaching assistant who is with that teacher. Um, it's a little bit different right now during um, COVID times because we have um, increased instead of two sections at each grade level, so two classes of 20, we have three sections, um, which means our class sizes are anywhere from 11 to 16 currently to really accommodate the physical distancing requirements um, from the health department. Great, thank you. Um, there was a specific question about the, the um, 
cohorts during uh, distance learning, have, have the sizes changed for that? So yeah, so as I just mentioned, they are slightly smaller. Um, what we did was an audit of all our facility spaces to see um, what each classroom could accommodate as we were adding those additional sections. And then we created class sizes based on what that, those safety um, protocols would allow. So 11 to 16 is the current class size. So not far off um, from our, our typical 20, but um, again, built to accommodate the, the size of the spaces available. Those do remain, however, with a lead classroom teacher and with a teaching assistant. And as you heard um, Connie say, we were so fortunate with um, our strong commitment to faculty and facilities ahead of time that we were able to um, move people from specialist roles into classroom teaching roles. So we'd not have to hire externally to cover during um, these COVID times. Gretchen, a couple of questions about the admissions process. Um, there are questions about um, how, you know, how, how should the families provide the letters of recommendation? And also if, if what the play dates might look like or kind of interviews that might happen um, during the admissions process. Sure, so we recognize that the landscape is quite different. Our admissions process, um, starting here with our virtual open house is very different than in the past, but we appreciate your patience and understanding as, as we navigate these complex times. Um, we, the hallmark, what I feel is the hallmark of our admissions process is really a personalization. So it's really our intention to get well acquainted with your family at the same time, give you plenty of opportunity to become familiar with Chandler and our program and why we might be the best fit for your child and your family. Um, once an application has been received by the admissions office um, for students applying to the lower school, K through five, um, you would be contacted by me directly um, and invite uh, you to schedule a uh, family visit. We'll do those virtually uh, with the Zoom flat platform. Um, but we want to have an opportunity to meet each of your families and um, get acquainted um, we wish that at this time we could do it in person on campus, but we will be doing it virtually. Um, and so once the application is received, you will get an invitation for that and the details about what the expectations are and the protocol for that will be uh, shared with your family when the, appli uh, when the um, application is received. Um, as far as supplemental materials, uh, teacher evaluation forms, um, letters of reference, uh, they can be um, scanned and emailed directly to me. I believe we have a slide at the end of this that has my email address. It's also located on our website. Um, so teacher evaluation forms, um, letters of reference um, also can be emailed. Um, we also are still receiving things in the mail. So if that's easier, we're happy to do that as well. Thank you. Could you also talk about um, tuition and what tuition covers and if there's additional costs that are outside of the tuition cost? Absolutely. So um, the on our website, we do have a breakdown of the tuition costs for um, kindergarten through fifth, sixth through eighth grade, um, as well as additional expenses that uh, are incurred by families. Um, for some specific grades with our outdoor education when we have that in place. Um, as far as uh, books and supplies, um, those are um, very often um, included in the tuition. Um, there are some additional fees for, uh, for school uniforms and the hot lunch program, um, and those are shared um, um, once a family has enrolled and we do a rollout of all of the information um, about getting ready for back to school. But certainly um, if they factor into your decision making process about the application process, I'd be happy to answer your questions personally. Um, feel free to reach out to me and we can get a breakdown of those costs. But again, tuition does include in the lower school uh, many of the books and supplies that the students will need during the course of their, their time in that grade level. There are um, a couple of questions about financial aid and the financial aid process. Could you speak to that? Sure. So um, our financial aid program, and again, we do have um, the step-by-step -step process outlined on our um, website. I'm also happy to answer any questions personally that any of you may have about that. But Chandler, um, our financial aid program is designed to, to really um, invite um, 
any qualified student to an access to an independent school education. And the financial aid program also reflects our belief uh, and mirrors our um, mission of reflecting and valuing uh, religious, racial, cultural, and economic differences in our students. Um, so the, the best way to learn about your qualification for financial aid is to apply. It is a separate application than the application for admission. Um, and I'm happy to, to guide your family through that. You can also contact our director of finance, who is Natalie Morales, and she can also um, answer questions about the financial aid process. Thank you. And then a final question about the admission process, Gretchen. Um, since we, you know, during this time, we may not be able to do in-person tours, how could the uh, applicants and the families, uh, you know, see, will there be a video tour or anything available to them? Absolutely. So we are in the final stages of um, preparing our uh, virtual tour of the campus, which will be made available to all of you. And um, also um, will live on our website. So, um, well, we do um, appreciate your patience and understanding um, in getting that to you and, and hope that at some point um, before the end of the admission season, we're able to, to have you on campus. But um, our hands are tied right now, but we hope that as our virtual tour is available, you'll have an opportunity to, to look at that. And certainly, um, I appreciate your feedback on it and if you have additional questions, but we'll be getting that out shortly. Thank you so much, Gretchen. Um, we're at 1012. I'll take uh, maybe two or three more questions. Um, and I appreciate all of those that are sending in their thoughtful questions. Um, we'll have um, uh, information available online always. But um, Emily, there's a lot of questions about differentiation um, and you know putting kids in kind of special tracks, if you will, or if uh, we put our students in um, different levels based on math, ability, science, or Spanish. Could you speak a little bit about differentiated learning and, and skills? Sure, so we wanna um, create, strike a balance so that students certainly spend time with all of their peers and also with peers who um, you know, may enhance in a smaller group their progression within a specific subject area. So while we don't track students, we certainly have opportunities throughout the day to move from whole group instruction into small group instruction. So you saw the kindergarten teachers speaking about some of their small math groups or guided reading spaces. Um, and those are really the sort of like groups within the groups that we use um, to make sure that students get the exact level that they need perhaps for mathematics or within language arts, um, reading and writing. Um, however, we don't track students because we also, as, as I spoke about, we, we see the lower school experience really as a journey, not a race. And so we know that um, where a student might be today, they could make significant leaps um, with that small group, really individualized instruction, that attention within a year or two and tracking a student without allowing them to sort of merge back or, or change into different lanes um, feels like it would be inappropriate for um, the childhood journey. So certainly, yes, we wanna address each child's individual needs. That's again, based on conversation between families, child and teacher. Um, and we do have lots of small group opportunities or individual conferencing within the school day, particularly having a lead teacher and teaching assistant, um, but we don't um, traditionally track students or, or formally, I should say, um, in order to allow them to really move in, in lots of different directions as they um, learn and grow. Just to follow that, if a student shows, you know, real interest and passion in something that, you know, something like art or music, is there any kind of differentiated paths or, you know, how do we continue to encourage and cultivate those interests that we have, you know, that our students are, are showing? Well, absolutely. If that's something that, that a teacher is recognizing, a student, a family is bringing to attention, then, then certainly we want to incorporate that into the core curriculum that we're already providing certainly in that small group instruction. And I think as Travis mentioned, using art as an example, um, our, our teachers also have that same passion. So they're excited to connect with students, whether it's over a lunch period or in an after school program um, to give them more opportunities. And another thing is that when we give assignments um, or are working through specific material, what we also can do is give students a lot of different choice and voice in how they choose to express their own progress or mastery of content. And so, um, while sometimes, of course, we need students to write um, an essay, there are other times when perhaps the way to show their learning is through art or through um, a musical production or a skit or a presentation of different kinds. So 
um, really being clear with students what the objective is, but allowing them to find the path that you know, really speaks to their passion to lead them to showing us what they know and understand. Thank you so much. I mean, thank, uh, again, uh, um, I apologize if I was not able to get to every question. We have all of your questions in the chat. We'll try to get to them and maybe send you an email or connect with you. But again, if uh, you have any questions for um, Gretchen Lurie, Emily Brown, please feel free to connect with them. Call the Enrollment Management Office or email any of us. We really appreciate all those who have um, joined us this, this uh, morning. And uh, Gretchen, if you have any closing remarks. I just want to say thank you so much for um, your early entry into this admissions journey. We understand that it's uh, not only complex for us, but as for you as families looking at independent schools as well. We know that you have a lot of wonderful um, options for education in the local community and really appreciate the time that you spent with us this morning and hopefully uh, we can continue the conversation with all of you to help you discover how Chandler might be the best fit for your family. So we hope to hear from you again soon and thank you again for joining us.